Good morning, boys and girls. I'm so happy to be able to share a book with you um, for this week. The book that we selected is called Pocket Full of Colors, and I did find this book in our library. I thought it would be fun to read about colors right now since it's springtime and we're starting to see lots of wildflowers out. It's The Pocket Full of Colors, The Magical World of Mary Blair, Disney Artist Extraordinaire. Under a wide blue sky, on a red dirt road, in a lemon yellow house, there lived a girl named Mary. Other children collected marbles or dolls, but Mary collected colors of every shade and every hue. One day, Mary's parents announced that they were moving out west. As she waved goodbye to the yellow house, Mary tucked her friend lemon in her pocket. Mary would miss the happy home, but she had new colors to collect. Driving across the sun-bleached desert, Mary spied russet, taupe, sienna. When she arrived in California, she glimpsed the azure ocean and found groves of golden fruit Dip dripping from viridian trees. In the city, she discovered steel gray buildings and mauve tinted skies. Mary opened her sketchbook. She mixed her paints. She would save these shades for just the right time. When she was older, Mary went to art school. She met Lee. He showed her rosy pink and blushing red. She kept those colors in her heart. Together, Mary and Lee painted rainbows, but it was the Great Depression and people were poor. No one was buying rainbows except one place. Mary landed a job at Walt Disney Studios, one of the first women ever to be hired. Finally, a place for her colors to run and dance and play as they pleased. Hollywood Land. But on her first day of work, the men in charge didn't want her to talk about Cerulean or Celadon or Cerise. They were only interested in black and white. Mary was told to follow the rules. She tried, but her colors were too vivid, too wild. When Mary turned in her work, all her ideas were rejected. Twinkling emerald skies, the men turned them blue. Magenta horses that could fly, the men made them brown and put them in a stable. Peach giraffes with tangerine spots, her bosses just shook their heads. They didn't know how to, what to make of her art. But Walt, the man who owned the company, did. He loved her color so much, he asked Mary to join him on a trip to South America to meet some new ones. Mary delighted in the oceans of Brazil, Argentina, and Peru. She worked hard to capture the vibrant scenery. When it was time to go home, Mary's bags burst with fuchsia, teal, aquamarine, indigo, lime green, and banana yellow. After Mary returned to Disney, her concept of art for the studio's upcoming films grew even more adventurous as she drew upon the eye-popping shades she'd observed in South America. Cinderella needed a teal pumpkin coach. The caterpillar in Alice in Wonderland could only be aquamarine and the mermaids in Peter Pan simply had to be lime green. The 
This time, some of Mary's ideas were accepted, but most of her art was still considered too modern, too abstract, and just not right. Mary's colors encouraged her to leave the men with their black lines and strict rules. So she did. Mary quickly found new work designing advertisements, illustrating picture books for children, and creating sets for plays and television commercials. She enjoyed the freedom of these new jobs, but Mary missed, Wal missed Walt. Then one day, out of the blue, Mary, I have a project for you. I need your wild and beautiful colors, his voice boomed. Walt explained his idea to build a magical ride that would teach people about cultures from around the world. The ride had to be full of color, which meant there was only one person for the job. Mary, you know about colors. I've never even heard before. Mary smiled, and then she frowned as she remembered the rules and the lines and the men in charge who didn't understand her colors or her style of art. There was only one way to answer. Yes, said Mary, but her eyes came with a condition. This time, Mary wanted to be the one in charge. Walt welcomed her aboard. Mary's paint seemed to sparkle when she hung up the phone. She had never been to places like China or Morocco or Kathmandu, but her colors had. Sitting down to work, she squeezed out dabs of paint, lemon yellow, aquamarine and azure, mauve, taupe and tangerine, russet, sienna, steel gray, celadon, cerulean, cerise, magenta, teal, indigo, and emerald shined from her palette. And when she picked up her brush, the colors Mary had so carefully collected all her life took her on a trip around the globe. When the work was done and the ride opened, people gasped in awe. It's a, small, it's a Small World was a sensation. When it was Mary's turn to take the ride, she leaned back in the boat and let her colors wash over her. It was a world of laughter, a world of smiles, and color, color, color everywhere. This was at last, was Mary's world. And there's an author's note about um, It's a Small World, the ride that was at Disneyland. Again, this book is called Pocket Full of Colors, and you can find it in our library. I encourage you to read every single day, boys and girls, at least 20 minutes. We'll see you next time.